This video has been brought to you by My Extraordinary Productions. Click the link in the description below. So this video is just my basic casting process for those of you who need help coming up with your basic casting process. So first thing I do is very obvious, but people forget about this step sometimes. I decide I'm going to film something. Once you've decided that you're shooting something, you need to put together your casting notice, which includes important dates, union status, payment information, uh, locations, who you're looking for, what the project even is, all of that good stuff. I switch off between Actors Access and LA Casting depending on what's going on. You may decide that backstage makes more sense for your production. You may decide that going to Craigslist or just going to a well-known actor community board in your area makes the most sense. Once you get all your submissions in, you can start filtering through your actors, in which case don't bring anyone in who is not right for the part. If someone is less than 85% right for the part, you need to start asking yourself, do I still want to do this project? Will I still be able to tell my story the way I want it to be told? If the answer is yes, then just go for it. Now before auditioning the actors, I need to decide what the venue is. I prefer starting with a self-tape audition, which basically means actors film themselves reading the sides and then I choose from there who I want for the next step. When looking for an audition space, you can use a theater. You can also use a room at a college. You could also rent an office for a day or something. You could also just have everyone submit videos to you. Some people like to say, hey Mark, you could totally just audition at your house, and there are two problems with that. The first being, I am a man and just saying, Hey, 20-something-year-old actress, would you like to go back to my place to audition for a role I think you'd be perfect for? Because that's sketchy. The other problem is that you don't know these people yet, and me personally, inviting a stranger to my house just doesn't sit well with me. I have to at least, like, know this person enough to know, okay, you're probably not going to steal all my things. Now that you have your audition menu, picked out and you've got a handful of actors you want to audition, now you can call, text, email them, tell them where and when your auditions are, and have them come over. This leads us to the actual audition. For my actual auditions, my basic formula is actor comes in, I have a quick back and forth with them, we read the sides once or twice, and then I let them go home. If you're expecting a lot of actors, you may find it beneficial to have some sort of sign-in sheet so that everyone knows what order they're auditioning in. If you're auditioning several roles, you may decide to have all of your actors read all of the roles so you can just focus on everyone's performance. Finally, if you have a camera setup, you can review all of your auditions later. Now we get to callbacks, which are totally optional. Some shoots you decide, hey, I don't have the budget for a callback, so I just have to pick someone. And sometimes you just say, hey, you know what? I, I really like this person, so I don't even need callbacks. In either case, a callback can be useful if you didn't get a real chance to converse with your actor and you want to get to know them just a little bit better before bringing them on board. A callback can also be useful if you want to try different combinations of actors in different roles. Just like your initial audition, if someone is not right for the part, don't call them in. Most people can call someone and easily say, congratulations, you booked the role, we're excited to work with you. But people don't necessarily know how to reject actors properly, and here's thing number one, you may not even have to do that in the first place. If it was a really quick one and done, your actor probably forgot about the audition in the first place, especially if you're in a major market where auditions are happening all the time and an actor is supposed to forget about their audition. So if you remind them, hey, you auditioned for us and we don't want you, then you're getting in the way of them forgetting. You can think of it that way. <laughs> Honestly though, when you are rejecting an actor, it's not even a talent thing. Most of the time it's scheduling or you were great, but you weren't 100% right or you know, some random thing. It's rarely about talent. Now you do have to formally reject an actor if you took up a lot of their time and called them back a lot and you gave them every reason to think they booked the job. In that case, I would recommend a simple script along the lines of, 
Hey, thank you so much for making the time to do all the auditions and everything. Uh, you're incredibly talented. You're not quite right for this project, but I really want to keep your information for the next project. Finally, if you're really uncomfortable rejecting people and you don't even want to deal with that whatsoever, you can make it easier on yourself by setting a deadline for everyone and just being really upfront with your actors and saying, I want to cast this thing by Tuesday, so you're going to find out by Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment with your questions, follow us on social media, click all the links, and I will see you next time.